team. You got championships coming up this weekend. What are you looking forward to most for your team heading into the weekend? Um, you know, I'm kind of excited about where we stack up. I thought we've had a phenomenal year. Obviously, had a lot of momentum coming off the indoor season. So, hoping that continues this weekend. Um, we got a lot of people high up on the performance list. Um, we got some people that are just outside scoring position, so hopefully they can um, step up and sneak in and gain gain a few points for us. Um, so yeah, that's probably what you know I'm looking forward to the most. So, so this past weekend you had kind of a shorter trip. You you went to one meet, and what changes between you know a two day full weekend and kind of a one day situation for the team? Um, not much. We you know it, it really is all the same, other than going down and back the same day. But you know we treat it like any other meet. We go through our same race day routines, warm ups, drills, um, all those types of things. I'll say the only thing that changed for us heading down there, the mentality for some was, hey, we're just doing this to get ready for conference um, and kind of tune up. Uh, and then for others that were not qualified yet, they you know this was their last chance to try and get into the conference meet. So uh, it was two different scenarios for two different groups, um, and so it was it was ha- kind of as coaches having to juggle both, um, trying to get people where they need to be, get them to the conference meet if they're not in, um, and then like I said, some people that they were just doing a race because uh, they just didn't want to you know get stale and have a long layoff in in between meets. So you go from having a couple of events to one event left, and how does it change mentality for the athletes when those cancellations happen for you guys? Um, you know, I would say they've adapted really well, um, and especially our upperclassmen or people that are from the upper Midwest, they understand that um, those things happen, um, and we have to adapt. And as coaches, it's our job to make sure that uh, we can prepare them still for, you know, if there's a replacement meet on the schedule and all that kind of stuff. But um, I would say, you know, they've done a phenomenal job of when we've said, hey, unfortunately, we're not competing this weekend, that uh, we have to make these adjustments that, you know, coming back, whether it's a different meet that same weekend or having the weekend off and coming back the following weekend. Um, I have thought we've done a really good job at juggling all of that and making, you know, the best of the scenario. Um, because there's some things that we can control and we and we try to control those as much as possible and there's other things um, outside of our control um, that uh, you know like I said we we have to spin it and use it to our advantage it's been a little bit of an up and down year on the women's side of the track and field but Brianna Johns Oster had a great performance where she finished first in her event what went behind that success for her last week yeah, um, you know, same thing that has gone on all, all year for her. I thought she has done a great job in preparation. Um, you know, I think the weather obviously helped a little bit. It was a little bit hotter than it has been at some of our other meets earlier in the year. Um, and she's just peaking at the right time. Um, I think that's ultimately what comes into it is that she's kind of rounding the corner, um, you know, the conference meet, you know, this weekend. Um, so she's feeling a little fresher. Um, you know, the excitement, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, she had a great day on, on a sa- Thursday, actually, last week. So, And Amber Stevan continues to rise the bar figuratively and literally for her in, in her event, beating her own record to set another D2 program record. Talk about her athleticism and what's led to the success in this event. Yeah, she's done a phenomenal job adapting, coming right over from, from basketball season. Um, every week she's um, making a few tweaks here and there, um, working with Coach Adams, and you know he's done a phenomenal job in bringing her along in, in the high jump. So uh, all credit to those two, um, you know, and I think a lot of it is her – uh, you know her adapting to coming straight off of basketball, maybe not having many opportunities uh, as much some of our other guys and gals who were are just straight track and field athletes, um, and getting to the conference meet. You know she jumped way up high on the list. I think she's somewhere around 14, 15th now, um, and she took she made the most of her opportunities. Um, that's all we can ask of her. Talk about some other athletes that you expect big things of heading into the championship weekend. Yeah, on the men's side, Leif Nelson is ranked first in the in the men's javelin, um, and Ben Austin is ranked fourth. So uh, that's an event that we feel like we can score a lot of points on the men's on uh, on the men's side. Uh, Chase Tandy is ranked, uh, I think, seventh or eighth. Uh, he was an all conference performer. Uh, in the 400 meters indoor, so we're hoping that uh, you know he can surpass a few people that are ranked ahead of him, uh, just like he did on the indoor season. Uh, Jacob Jensen, uh, he's done a great job throughout the year. He's had a breakout year for us, so you know we're hoping that uh, he's going to run the 10k on Friday, um, and we feel 
I feel really good about that. That eventually that's going to be hit one of his main events. That he can you know finish high on the podium, uh, and then come back the next day where he's ranked uh, ninth uh, and sneak a few points there in the five k. So uh, those are some individuals that you know again we feel like will catapult us uh, you know hopefully to our highest men's finish you know similar to indoors uh, since we've joined Division Two. On the women's side, um, Tori Nygaard she's done a great job uh, in the hammer. Uh, she's ranked eighth in the javelin so we're hoping that uh, she can score and her being a freshman I think that's phenomenal um, just getting a point in this conference at any throwing event it's so deep uh, year in and year out um, I think shows bodes well for our future you know with her um, Brianna Johns Oster we're hoping that she can make finals and then you know once she's in in the final flight that uh, you know anything can happen there on the track side of things uh, Caitlin Cornell uh, she's gonna run the 10,000 meters on Friday uh, and she's a freshman first time running the event um, but we feel pretty confident that she'll be able to to be in scoring position when all is said and done and then similar to Jacob she'll come back the next day and, and run the 5k um, uh, and then Abby McGee and uh, Alicia Morello uh, they'll run the 1500 meters um, and you know we need a few things to go well on our side and a few things to not go so well for some others and have them sneak into the final but I think the exciting thing about you know the conference championships is as long as you're in um, anything can happen on the day uh, you just got to get in that's the hardest part and there's some events this year across the board uh, in this conference that um, times are just so fast or marks are just so far that um, it's nothing like I've ever seen in in my three years here um, that you know Two years ago when we were in Duluth, uh, Caitlin Cornell probably would have been in the top 10, top 15, and, and she, she barely snuck in in the 5K. So it just goes to show the depth and how competitive this conference is. But you just got to get in. So, you know, I think, you know, once our, our student athletes are on the track or in the field or, you know, on the runway or anything like that, um, we feel confident that they can mix it up. And, you know, like I said, we need a few things to fall our way and a few things to not, not go so well for others. Um, obviously, I hope those at student athletes from other schools have have their best day and we're getting the best effort out of them but you know we're hoping the chips fall to our side come friday and saturday and what kind of mentality will it take for these athletes to have success this weekend you know it's i think it's going to be preparation excitement um you know dealing with the nerves um we're a very young team so we have a lot of first timers going to the conference championships um so dealing with that nervousness and being able to step up in big moments i think that's that's what the conference championships are all about. Because um, like I said, it doesn't matter what you go in ranked, but uh, if you can step up in a big moment, um, you can come away with some, some pretty fantastic results. And so some athletes that are going into their second championship this year, they're going into an outdoor after an indoor performance. What do you tell them after having one of the most successful indoor performances to carry that over to an outdoor well, one, hopefully they have the confidence to continue uh, to perform at, at the NSIC championships. Um, you know, for us, it's all about execution, um, you know, believing in them, making sure that, you know, we've prepared them as best we can um, and motivating them. Say, hey, like you are more than capable of this and maybe reminding them of the success that we experience indoors, that it can be done, uh, that uh, there are some really good teams here, some really good athletes across the board that uh, we're just as good as them. Um, that we can stick our noses in races and come away with points and medals and all those types of things. So I think that's the biggest thing that we can remind them that it's been done before. It's been done with this group. Um, and, you know, come Friday and Saturday, it can be done again. How proud of you of the work ethic of your team this year, going through everything that they've gone through to build to this? Yeah, it, I, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of our student athletes, of our coaching staff. Um, it's been a challenging year. Um, ups and downs with COVID, um, you know, dealing with that stress, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really proud of all our guys and gals, um, how they've adapted and um, had to deal with everything. You know, sometimes it was unknowing, like, you know, if, um, you know, like I said, whether it was cancellation of meets or just not being able to go all together, um, what meets we were going to were sometimes out of our control as well um, because Division One, Division Two, kind of separated the indoor season. Um, so I'm really proud of them. Um, you know, I think it only bodes well for the future of this program. Uh, we're young. We've relied on a ton of freshmen and sophomores. Um, and, you know, this conference is heavy, you know, senior laden. So I feel like, you know, come two, three years from now, when these kids, you know, have been consistent, have already experienced success on the conference level, uh, you know, it's going to be exciting. Uh, it's going to be exciting for this group to, you know, hopefully 
do better than we even have done this year. Thanks, Coach. Okay, cool. Thank you.